for chapter 3 that were cast down, but they're in prison, reserved in everlasting chains, meaning they can't repent and ever come to church and say, I'm sorry, God, I want to be on your side now. Unclean spirits, lust, yeah. hate, murder, unforgiveness, lies, deceit, seduction, all the stuff we wrestle against, we won't even admit. They are trapped. They're unclean spirits. They're demonic spirits. They're all of Satan's arsenal. There's a whole list of them. They are trapped in darkness. In other words, they can't ever be good again. And so what they do is try to influence you. They are persons without body. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That would be, that's why the Bible says when unclean spirits have gone out of a man, when a person who's lost gets saved and get delivered, it's like seven bad Spirits come out of them, and they are looking for another house to live in. But they come back and find the house they used to live in clean now, not filled with the Holy Spirit. They say, hey, she, he didn't fill himself up with God. Let's get back in. Lust, hate, murder. Lies, thieving, anger, bitterness, let's get back in. And the Bible says the last state of that person is worse than it was before. They're disembodied spirit. They're persons. So just imagine that all seven of them people try to cram into that one body. That's the way it is. So we wrestle not against them seven people. We are wrestling against the spirit of those seven people that you can't see unless you walk in the spirit. Because you put all them in the elevator, all them go to bed with you, all them ride the car with you, all them go to church with you, and that's why we don't know on any given day which one of them we talking to. You're supposed to be saved, but now you lusted. You're supposed to be saved, but now you lying. You're supposed to be saved, but now you you thieving. You're supposed to be, come on, and you say Jesus is your Lord, but you've given yourself over to the. So this walk is a walk where you keep crucifying the flesh because what you overcame keeps trying to overcome you. You don't ever get so saved that you don't need to fast and pray. You don't need to seek God for more power because the more you walk in the flesh, the more the enemy does what's called bring a familiar spirit to you. That's why all of y'all act like the people y'all related to. Amen. We all do because it's called a familiar spirit. It's a family spirit. It's traits that we all have been conditioned, amen, to act like. Lean our head the same way. Do the same old kind of walk. Talk, say the same kind of words. Have the same ideology, idiosyncrasy. It's a familiar spirit. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. But when you become a Christian, just sitting on the pew ain't good enough. Just saying I'm a preacher ain't good enough. You got to die to the flesh daily. You got to present your body as, come on somebody, as a living sacrifice. You got to find yourself in the presence of God and you got to drag those things that's inside of you into God's courthouse and you got to say avenge me of my adversaries yeah. Thank you, Lord. who are your adversaries yeah. them things in the flesh yeah. <laughs> that's still holding on to you they're in your generation 
cancer in the breast. That was in your family. A father who was a chiseler, a cheater, that was in you. Even if you're a girl, it don't just follow the boys. Amen. Lying in the family, gambling in the family, seduction in the family, murders in the family. Come on, haughtiness in the family. Avenge me on my adversary, Lord. We got to judge spirits, and we start with ourselves. You haul them into the court, and when you are praying, that's what you are doing. Amen. We got God. We got the prosecutor. And you got to go in, and you got to say, avenge me, because I may be guilty of lust. Avenge me of my bloodline. I don't know what my mama done. She appeared to be godly, but I don't know if what she was in the spirit realm. I don't know what my daddy done. He appeared to be godly, but I don't know. And there's some stuff I do know. But avenge me of my adversary because there's propensities inside of me. There's emotions inside of me. There's desires inside of me. There's some things I would do, but I can't do. There's some things I'm doing that I don't want to do. There's some habits I can't shake. Avenge me of my adversary. You don't go into the courtroom talking about how good you are. You confess your faults. Confess your sins. I got an advocate. And then you ask the judge, please, your honor, would you hear my advocate? Hear the one that died for me. Hear the one that shed his blood for me. Would you hear his plea on my behalf, on the behalf of my family, our bloodline? Would you have him hear his verdict? for me. Amen. You don't go in there self-righteous. I ain't done nothing. You tell him I ain't prayed like I should. I ain't loved you like I should. I've not been faithful in my giving like I should. I haven't served you with my whole heart. I haven't given you my best. Would you hear my advocate? Because he ain't going to hear you coming in there talking about, I go to Pastor Steve's church. I'm one of his members. I'm a faithful elder. I'm a faithful person. I'm there ever so. God ain't going to throw your butt out. And most folk go to God like that. I'm a deacon here at first shine on me. I, my family built that church, Lord. Now he said, I ain't listening to all of that. All I want to hear is that you're guilty. Humble yourself under my hand. Admit that you, if you go to court and tell the judge you're sorry. And you got to go in and appoint to your advocate, point to your attorney, and say, Lord, would you receive the sacrifice on Calvary on my behalf? I repent. I know I've done some things wrong. I know I shouldn't have done some things. I know there's some stuff in my family. I know some stuff they didn't tell me about us. I know there's some stuff that I don't know about. But receive the testimony of the Lamb. Receive the blood sacrifice on my behalf. And then here's what I want to ask you to do, Your Honor. I'll issue an injunction against my adversary, a restraining order against this wicked Satan. Make him leave my children alone. Make him leave my husband alone. Make him leave my wife alone. Make him leave my health alone. I need you, your honor, to issue, ah, issue an order. Issue an order against Satan. Issue an order. Only you can stop him. I got kids who won't listen to me. I got a situation that are out of control. I don't know what's going on in my house. I don't know what's going on in my life. I don't know what's going on with me. But Lord, issue an order. That's the only way 
you're going to get that enemy to back up off of you because he know you done went into God's courtroom and you done been honest with God. You done told God the truth. We don't go in there and tell God the truth. We want to go in there and sneak around God and act like I might have done it. I may not. You can't believe everything you hear, Lord. You can't. We go, oh, well, if it's true, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And God saying, you proud for somebody. You won't come home. You will know I see everything. When you learn to go to God like that, your adversary, he can't have nothing over you. He can't blackmail you out of health. You can go before God and say, you say healing is the children's bread. The doctor said, but you said, you can't go broke and say, I can't have nothing. You can say, the finance said, but Lord, you said, you can't go and somebody acting crazy in your house, you can say, Lord, this is going on, but you say, you can stand boldly in his presence because if he is, he enters an injunction against the Satan, the Bible says he will rebuke the divine for your, your sake and you ain't seen nothing till God strikes the gavel on your behalf. That's why he told Satan, he said, have you considered Job? And Satan said, you got a restraining order against me. That word hedge actually means a restraining order. Didn't mean no electric fence. It meant a spiritual restraining order. And there is a place where God will enter a restraining order against the enemy against you. Stand on your feet. And that's what that little skinny woman done. And that's what God wants from you. Recognize the protocol. The judge is on the throne. The accuser's in the corner. Conferring with his crooked prosecutors. Drumming up stuff against you. But you got an advocate standing over there. Got his stuff together. <laughs> Done bled all over your case. <laughs> Don't go in there trying to defend yourself. That's where, yeah, amen. That's where you're going to mess up. Oh, excuse me, I got this. You need to say, Your Honor, I confer to my attorney, sir. <laughs> And let him do his work. He will stand out and say, I died. I bled. I gave my life for him, for her. I paid the price for their sins. And you know he's written, Father. I interceded in John chapter 17. He's written, Lord, that if they would confess their faults, confess their sins, that I would forgive them, and they have confessed their sins, Lord. Take this wicked Satan and cast them. Y'all, y'all need to go in there like y'all part of the family. Come on, somebody. Raise your hands and give him praise. Give him praise. And then come out of there, straighten up your tie, and then walk like you, walk like you won your case. Walk and high five some people. Walk like you won your case. Somebody say, how'd you do in court today? How'd you do in court today? I did pretty good. I did pretty good. I did pretty good. Did pretty good. And you know what I do? I go in there and say, and I want reparations. I want payment back for pain and suffering. I want payment for pain and suffering. I want something back for all the nights I cry. Hello. <laughs> and you tip your hat, you tip your hat at old Satan, and you say, "What well, up, player?" <laughs> That's how you go to court. <laughs> Ain't that how you go to court? You tip your hat, you give him the gangster swag. Ain't that how I do? You walk around them, you do that, like you better recognize 
and I'll be here tomorrow if you try to bring some more charges. Come on, praise the Lord with me, somebody. Come on, praise God. Come on, minister to the Holy Ghost. Give him praise. Thank him because he delivered you. There ain't no man can lay nothing on you. We Take that demon to court. Take that devil to court. Take that fear to court. Take that unbelief to court. Take that accusation to court. Just confess, yeah, I did it. Lord, but I ain't gonna do it no more. Come on. Clap your hands for Jesus. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. You ought to be saved right where you standing today. You ought, you ought to be delivered right where you standing. See, when you go and do that, even if you're struggling with a habit, he can't hold it over you. Because you keep telling God about it, pretty soon you'll get tired of going to court over it. Come on, somebody. Jesus says, go and sin no more. That's a worse thing come on you. Come on. Come on, somebody. No man's condemning you. <laughs> Lift your hands and praise him. Who in the room need to get saved? <laughs> Who wants to give their life to the Lord? Hallelujah. Praise him. I don't know whether to offer prayer for salvation or just agree with you, amen, for atomic nuclear prayer life. Is that what it is? Amen. Grab the oil real quick. Let's just agree. Get it real quick. We're going to agree for a nuclear prayer life. We're going to blow the doors off our prayer rooms. Amen. If the prayer room is your car, Y'all, whoever wants it, come on up here. Come on up here. I'm going to hit you. You can go back to your seat. We ain't going to tarry about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, in Jesus' name. Nuclear prayer. I want you to go in there. State your case. Honor, honor your Lord. Honor your Lord. Honor the judge. Honor the judge. Acknowledge the prosecutor. Acknowledge that wicked Satan. Say, Lord, I know the enemy didn't told on you what I did what I've been trying to do. But here, I want you to look at the blood of your son in the name of Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on up closer. Yeah. I want you to see the blood that your son shed, that I could have spiritual power too, that I could have spiritual power too. Come on. You say, let the weak say I'm strong. Hallelujah. And then you say, every one of them spirits, every one of them spirits that he thank you, every one of them spirits that he drug in here against me, I'm rebuking them too. Come on. Yeah, because he didn't come to court by himself. He, he drug in stuff in your family. Yes, when he go before God, he say, she act like her mama in, in 70, act like her father in the 60s. He, he bring, he, that's a familiar spirit. It has information about your house before your folks came to the Lord. I'm going to leave this alone. But it's got information in your bloodline back as far as the cotton picking days. Got information before your folks got saved. You don't know who shanked who. Slavery days. And listen, I know for a fact that my grandfather, Ralph George Washington Conley, killed a white man. Now, they told me he killed a white man because a white man ran up on him. That's why they had to get out of Polk, Arkansas, and go to St. Louis. But now, I don't know. That could have been a lie just to keep me, you know, hey, but that, I know he killed a white man. So murder could be in the bloodline. Hello, somebody. And anything else, I'm just saying, that's stuff you don't know. But, uh, hey, that enemy, he bring all at the court to say this in a bloodline. 
This is their bloodline. But when you go in your closet, you got to remind God that somebody died for you, and his name is Jesus. And everything that the enemy tried, listen, y'all got kids. Some of y'all got kids. I ain't trying to be ugly, and I'm not judging anybody. You got kids, but the baby daddy ain't nowhere around. You don't know what was in the bloodline. You don't know what kind of stuff was cooked up in the bloodline. And you wondering why the kids, it may be for somebody watching. You, you don't know what was in the bloodline. You don't know what kind of lies, witchcraft was in the bloodline. You just say, I, I married a good guy. I married a good, got around with a good woman. Babies were born to that. You don't know what was in the bloodline. You say, well, I got saved in that council that. No, but the enemy, he keeps going before God. When you do sin, he say, now, like a prosecutor, now, this is their history. Goes all the way back to the 40s. And he bring that before. That's why God is not quick to judge. He sits and he hears the case. Then when here you come, committing fornication, he says, see, Your Honor, uh, her father was that way. His father was that way. It's in the bloodline. Now, you need to let some type of sickness or disease come up on them. And when I afflict them, because God doesn't don't do it. When I afflict them with breast cancer, when I afflict them with prostate cancer, I'm trying to figure out, I'm conferring with my demons about it. You you can't do nothing because they don't, number one, come to you and ask you for spiritual protection and they're they going to blame you for it because they don't have enough sense to pray protection over their life. And God is just sitting there saying, well, I can't get involved, counselor, because they don't ask me to let thy kingdom come in earth as it is in heaven. No way. So I can't do it just because they in the earth. Because if I did it for them, I got to do it for these people over here. And so stuff come, and God get blamed for it. But when you get what I'm telling you, you'll go in your closet, and you will clean house. You'll go in there every day, and you'll plead mercy on your family and on your children. Mercy on my marriage. Mercy on my health. I want to live out my days. The book said I should live till I'm 90. The devil said I want to take you now. Heaven don't need you. Yeah. Folks talking about God call them home. God ain't called a whole lot of these folk home. They went home. Heaven don't need you. Heaven need prayer. Earth need prayer warriors. Earth need evangelists. Earth need pastors with fire. Earth need apostles, prophets that can raise the dead. Why would God say raise the dead and be in such a hurry to bury everybody? Yeah. Quit telling that lie. Yeah. Heaven don't need you. I don't care if you got the fourth stage. My God's a miracle worker. Fourth stage don't mean nothing. Mean there's a fifth stage and a sixth stage. Who gave the numbers to it? He said, go and preach the gospel. And the good news is, they say I'm in the fourth stage, but God says, your name is Lazarus. Live. Heaven needs, earth needs this kind of word. Don't come to, to the bedside burying me because somebody convinced you God was through. <laughs> Lift your hands and praise him. Heaven full of good people. They got Hagen already. What they need you for? They got Miles Monroe. What they need you for? They got other great preachers. What they need? They got Catherine Kuhlman. They can't get it done with them. What they need you for? Got Smith Wigglesworth. What they need you for? Charles Camps. What they need you for?
The earth needs men and women of fire to be a witness for the Lord. Go in your prayer closet. Elijah didn't call down fire. He rebuilt the altar. Rebuild that altar and see if heaven don't come in there and make itself known. Just rebuild the altar. Just build it again. Just build it again. Build the altar. Little corner in the house. Little spot in the closet. Take the clothes out, the fan, them blankets, crawl space. Build the altar. Little sit-down spot. Little place to sit and meditate. Little flashlight in there. Little lamp. Just go and sit. Read the Bible. Pray a little bit. Just rebuild the altar. My God, you will see that heaven will invade your place. Lift your hands and praise him. The Lord want to give that lady a double portion right there. This lady. You, come here. I know you came. Yeah, I don't know you. I'm going to obey God. I hesitate. Give me the oil. I don't know who you are. But he want a double portion. What, what's your name? Rosemary. Rosemary. That's good. That's good. Here, I'll wipe it off on here. Come over here, dear. Step over here. Lift your hand. Thank you, honey. Rosemary. Everybody say Rosemary. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh. God, as she has received, as she has received,